Today's video is sponsored by Speaker Workshop. If you have a valuable speaker suffering from a damaged cone, rubbing, or burned voice coil, contact Speaker Workshop. Many classic amp circuits were designed in voice with particular speakers in mind, and replacing speakers in some classic vintage amps can severely diminish the resale value and make the amp not sound as intended. Preserve the value and tone of your classic amplifier. Have its original speaker reconed at Speaker Workshop. Hey, what's up dudes? I'm Brad the Guitologist here and uh, it's time to open a box and see what's in it and maybe fix what's in it. I think this is a pedal. I can't remember what the hell it is exactly though, so I guess I'll be as surprised as you, won't I? Actually, I'll be more surprised because you will have undoubtedly seen the title of the video by now, so there's a bat. Oh, it's a battery. I've got to fix a battery. <laughs> Pedals are always fun because um, you know, to be quite honest, I, pedals is not my forte, so there's always uh, a little bit more of a learning curve in repairing a pedal or troubleshooting a pedal when you know less about it. So, this is an Electro Harmonics Muff Fuzz. There's no back on this. I think, if I remember correctly, on the correspondence that I had, with the owner of this thing. He doesn't have the back. And he was asking me about, hey, uh, is there a way to restore this? What can I do to possibly restore this? And I'm pretty sure I told him, well, um, you know, you'd have to, you would have to basically bend up a new back made out of, um, you know, a piece of shim stock or something like that, some metal. Basically, you have to do the same thing they did here with this piece, but you have to do it for the back and you have to, make a couple of bins with some you know holes for screws to to go into and everything so um i can't remember whether i'm supposed to build that back for him or fix this electronically let me look at the correspondence maybe and refresh my memory and then we'll get back into this but this should be interesting in 19 it's got to be 70s right electro harmonics muff fuzz yeah, so apparently, according to Reverb.com, this particular model was made from 1977 to 1983. It's less sought after than the larger big muffs from the era, a lot of yada. It does not have a, uh, a foot switch on it, which is probably part of the reason it's not as sought after. Looks like the prices on these have steadily climbed, particularly over the last few months and it looks like maybe it's down to some video that was made by some metal heads on YouTube or something, according to at least some of these buyers. So anyway, so that, that's that. And I was basically just searching, not, not for historical information on this, I, but I wanted to see what the back of this was made of and see if I could find one that had been taken apart because um, if I'm going to make a back for it, for this customer, I'm probably... You know, well, I'm not probably, I am going to try to make it at least look the part. But that's the thing, I want to see what the back actually looks like. And it, I can't find any photos of, I can see plenty of photos of the inside and of the tops, but I can't see any photos of just the back. Nobody's showing me anything here. It looks like also they made one that was, that would plug directly into the amp, which is interesting. So that's what it was meant for, I guess. Or, well, I guess one version of it was meant for that. So you would plug this right into the amp. It's kind of neat, I mean, but it wouldn't work with all amps. So that's, I mean, even though this is kind of small, you might have trouble on some amplifiers to, to get that in there. There might not be room, you know. Here we go. There we go. That's it. Um, okay, so you can see what it is. It's basically... It's just a flat piece of metal that's bent in two places and it has four holes in it. Real simple. So yeah, we can make something. We can make that. No problem. And I did also find the schematic. Looks like there's a couple different ones. Does this have an op amp in it or is it a... Okay, it looks like it may have an op amp. I have a bunch of parts laying around. I could knock one of these up in probably no time flat. We may just build one of these while we're at it. 
Maybe we'll come up with something that we can build and it might be kind of fun for a minute to build one of these while we work on this one. So first of all, let's go ahead and disassemble the one that we have here that we're going to work on and we'll uh, get to work on it. There's a lot of oil or something around the base of that. You see that? There's like some oil or something down there. I just, I wonder whether somebody tried to clean this little pot with uh, an inappropriate substance at some point. Got these cool little vintage ice cube trays at a uh, an estate auction. I've never had any ice cube trays like this, the old style that were individual, you know, and they would you would set these on a in the freezer. And uh, my daughters and I've been making Jello pudding pops with them, and uh, man, it works out really nice. And the pudding pops have been a real blast from the past lately, and they've been a super hit with the kids too. Those were the days when Bill Cosby was a, a, a paragon of wholesomeness, you know. <laughs> what does that say right there? Is that an E? E-A-L-D-E-R? That's got to be the person who put this together, but anyway. But you see there, like I said, there's and there's more of that oil. Probably WD-40 or something they sprayed it with. Oh my God, look at that just all over it all right so this op amp that's in this is a Texas Instruments op amp it is a 1458 MC 1458P and it just so happens, if it's bad, I won't even have to wait for parts, I don't think. Yep, 1458P. So I've already got a, replace, a bunch of replacements. And that also means we will be able to exactly uh, replicate this circuit. <laughs> so that's kind of cool, right? So we'll just do a little parts build here while we're at it. All right, so we've got jacks, we've got uh, got our op amp. Okay, what do we got here? We got some uh, 0.1 microfarad. We got looks like we got three 0.1 microfarads. A couple of diodes. I think, and those are the little germanium diodes. One, two, three, four, five resistors. Absolutely nothing to to this. Let's get a little board to build it on. Okay, okay. This uh, this stuff was sent in by a fan of the channel, and I think I might be able to use one of these switches for the switch. It's probably overkill, but uh, it's going to be better than the switch that's that's on the original one because it's just a you have to actually you can't use your foot on it. All right. Well, anyway, we've got some parts there, courtesy of uh, a channel fan and, and some viewer mail. We've got thin little boards too. And I could even socket this. I have sockets, I believe, for op amp. Uh, so we could socket that op amp. Take that out of the court. Okay, so we'll set that aside for a minute. Um, and we'll get back to work on this thing. So he said something about he thinks maybe the switch is bad, which is possible. I've got switches that are like that also. Let's spray a little lubricant in that in that one. And in 
there. Actually, I want to test this as as it is uh, for the moment. And here's the problem. I forget which is which. In or out. Uh, this one's the input. Alright, so the other one goes to the amp. I'm going to go ahead and j we'll just test it out here on the desk like this. No, it is doing something. It is working. All right, plug a guitar into it. Oh, here we go. You can't hear your show when I'm playing the guitar? Yeah. Oh man, that's how? It, that's exactly, maybe you do in the basement. You want me to go in the basement? And do it. Can't be able to, to, to do hear my show. You don't want me to play guitar? Yeah. All right, I understand. You're gonna do it when I, when I tell you to, okay? Okay, well how about this? Uh, I will stop playing guitar. How's that? That's good. All right. You Go watch play, your show. You can play guitar again once I say so. Once you say so? Okay. All right, little sassy miss. So this pedal works pretty much just fine. Uh, it, it's not... Or wait, whoa, what was that? I think this jack may have been shorting out against something right there right there okay well in any case what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I'm gonna re I'm gonna come in here and reflow a lot of sol solder uh, and we'll I will thoroughly clean both this pot and this switch with some real cleaner not whatever crap was sprayed in there before which looked to me like it was some kind of oil based something um, which is inappropriate so I'm gonna clean these right I'll clean the jacks reflow all the solder and I think we're gonna be okay the op amp seems to be working just fine so there's no problem there um, I'll test the battery to make sure the battery's not low and yeah man that's about all you can do and then we'll we'll clone one real quick man we'll see what and we will go ahead and restore the back of this while we have it too we'll make him a back for that I'm having to draw a schematic because I've found out that this particular circuit is not the same as any of these schematics that I have found. I want to try to build the exact one because I have the exact op amp driver in it so I might as well clone it direct.
coming along, little fuzz. Okay, so here's the board completely done. I think it turned out looking all right. It's not sloppy or anything, really. Not too bad for a little home-brewed thing. So now uh, all I need to do is attach the input and output jacks, the switch, and the power supply.